ulitin natin, no? Yung fringe benefit, uh, para maintindihan natin ng mabuti, um, introduce ko muna yung three kinds of employees, di ba? Sabi natin na we have managerial employees, we have supervisory employees, and we have rank and file employees. Yung mga managerial employees, sila yung in charge sa management ng company, they have the power to hire, fire, dismiss, and execute management policies. Sila din yung gumagawa ng mga policies sa management. Uh, when you say supervisory employees, sila yung nagre-recommend no, for the uh, management actions no, to the manager. And if uh, the employee is not a manager nor a supervisory employee, then that employee is a rank and file employee. So, uh, saan papasok yung fringe benefit? Yung mga employees, meron yan silang mga allowances and benefits na nare-receive from the company, right? Uh, if you can, if you are familiar with allowances like rice allowance, over, uh, ano pa, yung mga overtime meal allowance, yung uh, fuel allowance, medical allowance, yung mga ganyan na mga benefits and allowances. So, under sa batas, may mga allowances and benefits na exempted siya from income tax. From the imposition of income tax. Kasi, minimal lang yung mga amount. No? Parang, uh, yung amount niya is just enough lang no? to, to, to support the employee. Meron ding mga ano, kaya uh, kaya yung mga ganyan na mga benefits and allowances, they are exempted from the imposition of income tax. However, with respect to benefits and allowances received by managers and supervisors, if yung mga benefits and allowances na nare-receive nila are beyond the minimum allowed by the law, then masasubject na sila sa tinatawag nating fringe benefit tax kasi uh, hindi na sila minimal amount no so beyond na sila parang uh, malaki na yung amount like car, bahay yun ang mga example ng fringe benefit so magkano yung tax rate natin for fringe benefit effective January 1 2018 and onwards a final tax of 35% is hereby imposed on the grossed up monetary value of fringe benefit furnished or granted to the employee. Uh, take note that rank and file employees are not included no, in the uh, imposition of fringe benefit tax kasi yung mga rank and file employees, yung nire-receive nila usually are uh, yung tinatawag natin na Ano, ano ang tawag natin doon? De minimis benefits, no? Yung mga de minimis benefits lang. Yung mga minimal amounts lang. Like the usual no, that we receive, no? Like, uh, for example, sa private uh, private companies, we have rice allowance, yung merong, ano, ano pa man, uh, meal, meal allowance, uh, transportation allowance, yung mga minimal lang, maliliit lang yung value. Whereas yung fringe benefit, ano yung fringe benefit? Yung definition kasi niya is, it means any good service or other benefit furnished or granted in cash or in kind by an employer to an individual employee except rank and file employees as defined herein. Such as but not limited to the following. Number one, housing. Di ba? Hindi naman yun minimal no? kapag the company provides a housing for uh, their managers no? or their supervisors. Expense account. So yung expect, expense account, ang ibig sabihin lang yan is uh, meron kang allowance, no? meron kang a certain amount na you can uh, use no? for uh, yourself no? para sa sarili mo. Vehicle of any kind, oh, di ba? Household personnel, oh, the company will provide you made, a maid, a driver or others, no? Interest on loan at less than market rate. 
membership fees, dues, and other expenses borne by the employer. Expenses for foreign travel, holiday and vacation expenses, educational assistance, and life or health insurance. But take note here that the employee should enjoy the, uh, the fringe benefit, meaning to say, wala dapat siyang condition na kailangan mag-render ng ganitong service yung employee. Parang hindi mo dapat siya nililiquidate kasi you cannot consider it as a benefit if you are required to liquidate the cost incurred no? in connection with the particular fringe benefit. So, uh, basically, kapag sinasabing fringe benefit, yung employee talaga nag-e-enjoy siya sa benefit na walang kapalit. Okay? Kaya, uh, kaya meron siyang, dahil nag-e-enjoy yung employee, meaning to say, there is an added income on the employee's part. And therefore, sabi ng National Internal Revenue Code, that should be imposed with fringe benefit tax. So letter C, there are fringe benefits that are not subject to tax. No? One of this is the de minimis benefits. Yung sinabi ko na, ano nga yung meaning ng de minimis benefit? Small, uh, relatively small value, yung mga benefits with relatively small value. Yun ang meaning ng de minimis benefit. No? So ano yung mga exempted? Number one. Fringe benefits which are authorized and exempted from tax under special laws. So kapag merong special law, say granting exemption, then therefore it is exempted. Contributions of the employer for the benefit of the employee to retirement, insurance, and hospitalization benefit plans. So kapag yung uh, pera na binibigay ng employer is for retirement, insurance and hospitalization benefit plans then yan ay exempted no from fringe benefit tax benefits given to the rank and file employees whether granted under a collective bargaining agreement or not and the minimis benefits okay Take note that uh, yung insurance dito is yung allowed lang no within lang the limits allowed by the law. But uh, in order for an insurance premiums to be subject to fringe benefit tax, dapat yung amount known is in excess of what the law allows. So remember the 35% no on the gross up monetary value. So let's go to the minimis benefits. So ano yung mga de minimis benefits under the law? So you can uh, find that in section 33 paragraph C sub paragraph 4 no, of the tax code. Number 1 is yung monetized unused vacation leave credits of private employees not exceeding 10 days during the year. Di ba yung mga employees, meron silang vacation and sick leave, di ba? Na-earn ng employee yan over time. So kapag meron kang unused vacation leave, pwede mo yung i-monetize, meaning i-convert mo into cash. But up to 10 days lang no? during the year kapag yung employees private employees on the letter b monetized value of vacation and sick leave credits paid to government officials and employees so here kapag ikaw ay government official and or employee yung vacation tsaka sick leave mo can be monetized lahat no kahit hindi wala siyang limitation no as to the number of days so lahat ng vacation at tsaka sick leave mo you can monetize that kapag unused. Kaya yung mga nasa government uh, sector, malalaki yung kanilang retirement pay kasi kasali doon yung kanilang monetized, unused 
on vacation and sick leave, no? Yung iba, hindi sila nag-leave talaga, hindi nila ginagamit kasi uh, at the end of uh, the day or at the end sa kanilang uh, employment term, they will monetize it. Tsaka marami yung ano. And uh, the amount that should be, that, that will be the basis no, for the monetization is the current salary, no? daily salary. So kahit na nag-start ka 15 years ago with a, with a daily rate of 500 pesos, ang mag, hindi yun ang gagamitin. Ang gagamitin is yung present mo na daily rate. No? Kaya malaki siya. Letter C, medical cash allowance to dependents of employees not exceeding 1,500 per employee per semester or 250 pesos per month. So, merong medical allowance no up to 1.5 lang. Yung ay uh, yung mga threshold dito ha is exemption para ma-consider siya as de minimis. So if beyond na siya sa 1,500 per year or 250 pesos per month, then yung excess will now be subject to income tax. Or yung excess niyan ay masasubject siya sa 90,000 threshold. Remember the 90,000 threshold? Doon muna siya masasubject. So kung masulod pa siya sa 90,000, hanggang 90 lang siya. Pero kapag sumobra na siya ng 90, then that's the time that it will be subject to income tax. Rice subsidy, exempted siya up to 2,000 pesos or one sack of 50 kilogram rice per month. Amounting to not more than 2,000. So meaning to say, Kung 2,000 yan, dili, dili na siya 160. Kaya 160, 2,150 man, di ba? So, kwa lang ta ka ng 7 lang ta. Then, uniform and clothing allowance not exceeding 6,000 per annum. So, manotice ninyo yung uniform allowance ninyo is 6,000 pesos kasi based yan sa NIRC. Kasi hanggang 6,000 yung exempted from income tax. Letter F, actual medical assistance. Example, medical allowance to cover medical and health care needs, annual medical executive checkup, maternity assistance, and routine consultations not exceeding 10,000 pesos per month. Laundry allowance. Oh, meron pang laundry allowance. Diba? Ang swerte mo kapag nag-provide yung company not exceeding 300 pesos per month. Employees Achievement Awards, example, for length of service or safety achievement. No? With an annual monetary value not exceeding 10,000 pesos received by the employee under an established written plan which does not discriminate in favor of highly paid employees. Yung mga ibang company, nasa ano nila yan? Nasa budget nila yan, yung mga achievement awards. Gifts given during Christmas and major anniversary celebrations not exceeding 5,000. Ito yung cash gift every December. Kaya 5,000 lang yung nare-receive natin na cash gift kasi hanggang dyan lang yung exemption. Daily meal allowance for overtime work and night or graveyard shift not exceeding 25% of the basic minimum wage on a per region basis. Now, yung next question natin, required ba yung mga employer na magbigay ng lahat ng mga allowances na ito? The answer is no. no? Itong mga de minimis benefits, uh, na-provide ito sa NIRC just to uh, set the threshold. no? Kapag nagbigay yung employer, hanggang saan lang yung exempted na amount, okay? But it doesn't mean that itong de minimis benefits, so itong lista na ito, requires the employer to provide no for their employees. Hindi ganun yung ibig sabihin nito. Swerte ka kung meron ka nito, okay? So kapag uh, kapag yung be certain benefit hindi siya nasali doon sa list ng de minimis benefits provided for under the law then yung mga benefits na yon they will not be considered as de minimis benefits. So pwedeng maging fringe benefits sila.
Okay, any question as to fringe benefit? I will no longer give you illustration no, for, for fringe benefit. No? Pwede mo basta maintindihan nyo lang kung ano yung nature ng fringe benefit. Kung bakit siya tinatax? Kasi yun na nga, merong additional wealth, no? additional inflow of wealth on the part of the employee and the employee enjoys the same no hindi siya required to uh, to give something in exchange sa mga benefits na yan kaya dahil nag-enjoy ka for additional inflow of wealth although hindi siya in cash in kind siya still uh, mako-consider siya as income no for purposes of taxation and therefore it should be subject to income tax